BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Okay, and a big thank you to everybody who listened to our uploads on the Zodiac Killer Suspect Shell Cavale, which came out recently. And in part two of that one, we were talking about how we were going to be doing an AMA at the end of the month and ask me anything. So if you're listening to this now, you can drop any questions that you would like to have discussed in an AMA. We often talk about serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, as well as other things we've gotten into for the month of October, like paranormal hauntings. And yes, indeed, it is now the month of October. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about some things like ghost stories, cases of paranormal activity, and just asking and answering the question about what are people experiencing. Recently on the channel, we did an upload called The Haunting of Sloss Furnace, which is talking about a place in Birmingham, Alabama, a former steel mill, a furnace that was um, perhaps haunted. And you can hear more about that in our upload, The Haunting of Sloss Furnace, which is available in the description box here. If you like a more overall comprehensive description of everything, the best way you can support the channel is just by listening to some more of our content, never asking for any money. All you got to do is listen. If you like what you hear, you can share it with your friends on social media. And as always, please like and subscribe. And the other thing that you could do to help out the channel is just uh, drop some questions in the comments section below that we can use for the AMA at the end of the month. But yes, we did one on the haunting of Sloss Furnace. And there's a particular line in there about an individual that may or may not be haunting this place in Birmingham, Alabama. And his name was James Slag Wormwood. I believe his middle name is actually Robert, so says some sources here. James Robert Wormwood, and he's referred to as Slag Wormwood in many of the sources. And they're saying that he was a foreman who led the graveyard shift at this steel mill, and that he fell off of a very tall location where he didn't normally work, and he landed into either a vat of molten steel or molten iron, and that he was killed. And then people reported, to it. People have reportedly seen the ghost of Slag Wormwood throughout this area in Birmingham, Alabama, Sloss Furnace, and maybe some other locations. And that really was not very satisfying to me. And if you listen back to the upload, The Haunting of Sloss Furnace, you can hear some things about how I said, James Slag Wormwood. This name sounds like a character from a Dickens novel. Most precisely, I was thinking of McChokum Child as well as Mr. Talkinghorn. I mean, you can kind of tell that I was alluding to the fact that I was somewhat skeptical if this story were true or not. If this, if there was this really mean, nasty man named Slag Wormwood who was uh, terrorizing the employees, and they, I mean, the the claim is that there were approximately sixty people who died at Sloss Furnace, and forty-seven of them were rumored to have been working on Slag Wormwood's shift, and that he would just speed up production to try and impress his superiors. And I wanted to know what really is true. So I began reading up on some of the things surrounding Birmingham, Alabama, and the steel mills, as well as the coal industry. And there are just countless things. I mean, some so there are so many people who are just so passionate about the history of the American worker. There are books on this subject, and there are multiple books out there on Sloss Furnaces that um, not only talk about the ghost stories, but just about the people who worked in the steel industry as well as the coal miners. I mean, there really are some great things. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to a website called lastgaps.com, L-A-S-T-G-A-P-S, lastgaps.com. And let's look at their introduction here. James Robert Slag Wormwood was the plant manager from 1886 until his death in 1899 supervised 150 workers. Legend says Wormwood died during his only inspection of the top tallest furnace tower where Wormwood fell from a catwalk into molten ore. Wormwood's death ended the nighttime work at the plant. And the um, the name that they give to the tall tower on the uh, website Fright Furnace, which tells the story of Sloss Furnace, is Big Alice. And this is the thing I wanted to know. Is this really true? Or if not, what could be the story behind it? And um, there are many sources out there that will corroborate this as we can see what's going on. So let's find out what's going on. The story of Slag Wormwood is fiction based, and it's based on the death of a real person, a well-liked assistant foundryman named Richard Jowers, who died at the DeBardelebin Coal and Iron Company. And that's spelled D-E-B-A-R-D-E-L-E-B-E-N. 
de Bardelaben Coal and Iron Company, and he did but die from uh, at Alice's number one furnace. And this is, um, as you heard that name there, though, this did not take place at Sloss Furnace. This was on the other side of Birmingham, and his death occurred on the 9th of September, 1887. And if you look at uh, some other sources, they will sometimes, I have seen this written as September 10th, 1887. Richard Jowers allegedly fell into the furnace while supervising the repair of a melting bell, which is a kind of funnel. The original Wormwood hauntings, as well as his death, are first recorded at Alice First. Alice Furnace, number one, but when it was decommissioned and destroyed in 1905, the legend shifted to Alice, number two, until its demolition in 1927. The ghost moved across town to Sloss after that. Most of the Wormwood legend is from the haunted house at the Sloss location. Additional confusion is linked to the 1978 book, The Ghost in the Sloss Furnaces, by Catherine Tucker, Wyndham, where that uses the fictional name Theophilus Calvin Jowers. And um, Jowers, of course, just like it says in the title, J-O-W-E-R-S. And you will see this name, Theophilus Calvin Jowers, written on many other websites. And a lot of people really do have many things to say about this. When I was um, looking into our upload, the uh, the material for our upload, I should say, The Haunting of Sloss Furnace, I was really quite surprised just how many people are really just digging into the local history of Birmingham, Alabama, the state history of Alabama. And they're sharing it all over the Internet. They're really trying to get this info down very, uh, very clearly. And it's not only the history of the state, but also of um, labor and what the workers went through. And I think those are the valuable stories that people are very passionate about. But, um, you know, it sounds like an absolutely horrific death and um, that Richard Jowers would have experienced. We have to say a big rest in peace to him. And I mean, that is something that I think we can all just learn from about the hardships that many workers went through. And I mean, and one thing, I swear that I read this in one of the articles, they were talking about how he was just really leaning over, trying to repair something, and I mean, in somewhat of a different way, and then he fell into this vat of ore, as I said, molten ore. But um, let's keep going in the article from lastgaps.com. One of the first accidents from the books Lost Furnaces and the Rise of the Birmingham District, an industrial epic by author Walter David Lewis, is recorded in 1882 when two black laborers named Alec King and Bob May were tasked with removing ore and coke that had burned to the brick walls of furnace number one. The two men were lowered into the interior of the furnace and began to dislodge the material which fell into the material's hearth and that were still smoldering. The resulting smoke gas quickly overcame the men and they fell to their deaths. Just another story of some other workers that passed away doing some very, very hard uh, work there. But um, so rest in peace to those guys as well. I mean, it just sounds absolutely absolutely shocking. But um, what I can say about Richard Jowers is the things that I've been reading about him is after he fell into this vat of molten ore, one of the reports said that they were able to get some of the bones out and his head and give him a proper burial, as much of a burial as they could. But in a different source, they were saying that they were only able to retrieve the hip bones as well as some other bone fragments. And those were used at Richard Jowers' funeral. Um, I know that he was born in 1847, and he passed away in September of 1887, so he would have been around 40 years old at the time of his death. We're going to go over to a different source now, the RandolphLeader.com, which has some material on Richard Jowers. The story of Richard Jowers stood out among the many horrendous deaths on the job. On September 9, 1887, he was working at Furnace Number 1, standing near the top of the furnace. He slipped, and he and the heavy bell that he had been preparing to melt tumbled into the molten steel below. There was nothing anyone could do to help, and they stood helplessly by as Jowers was incinerated. It is rumored they were able to remove his head and several bones, and that's one that I said, but remember, there's the other source that says they only got the hip bones out before his remains were completely lost and destroyed. So there was something to bury. Some saw him dancing in the flames of the furnace. And what I think they mean by this, when he's dancing in the flames of the furnace, I think that that is not going down the paranormal pathway. They mean that they were, that he did not, he didn't die instantly. When I was first uh, learning about this stuff, um, and I was just expecting that when Richard Jowers would have fallen into the vat of war, that he would have been killed instantly. I didn't think anyone could survive that heat. And I mean, at the very least, maybe his nervous system would have overtaken and he wouldn't have actually been in any true pain, like going into shock and he, he would have lost all awareness of what was going on. 
And it sounds like he did pass away rather quickly, but I mean, I'm not 100% sure and I'm not a medical doctor. The way that they present the story of Slag Wormwood in the uh, upload that you can hear in the description box, The Haunting of Sloss Furnace, is quite different. They're saying that because this individual Slag Wormwood with the beautiful name was just such a slave driver, just such a hard ass that the employees eventually just revolted against him because they were working in temperatures of 120 degrees in the summertime, and he was just such a nasty overlord of the workplace, more or less, that they dragged him up on top of Big Alice and then threw him into the vat of molten ore. But um, as we see that Slag Wormwood is based on um, Richard Jowers, according to the sources that we have here. And it's very difficult to get the exact narratives about everything that happened, especially when we're going back to 1887. I mean, we're, when we're talking about stuff from the 1960s, that is even difficult to completely get all of the material in order. And one of the true benefits of this is that we still have people who are alive in the 1960s who can kind of weigh in on this. Not only were they alive, but they were also very much involved with these events, and they were able to give firsthand accounts of being a journalist in 1968 and 69, and they can tell us about things that they experienced firsthand. When you're dealing with September of 1887, it's a rather different picture, and that we're really just relying on what is recorded in the history books. But as we get into the world of ghost stories, let's go back to the RandolphLeader.com. Several years ago, friends were at a conference and walked down the hall to a restroom. They went through a door into a stairwell. A man dressed in old clothes said they were not supposed to be there. He then walked up the stairs, but they never heard the door open and close. And this is one of the ghost sightings that really happens in Birmingham, Alabama a lot. Maybe it's the ghost of Richard Jowers. Or maybe it's something different and people aren't necessarily 100% sure what they are seeing. But there's often somebody who is has been reported telling people to stay away from the areas near where these vats of molten ore would have been. Or just somebody who is telling people to get back to work. And when we talk about the stuff from Sloss Furnace, people are saying things like a man has instructed them. And like they see that he has some type of disfigurement, which most likely would co would have come from being burned. And this is reported. But once you get over to the Sloss Furnace um, ghost hunting page, it's all about slag wormwood. And it really isn't 100% um, um, based on, well, it, it feels like it's com coming across as somewhat of a deceptive way. And I don't mean to drag down anybody. I don't mean to try and ruin anybody's fun or ruin anybody's entertainment with the subject. I would, and I don't want to completely, you know, sh shatter anybody's dream of finding ghosts on, on tape and on camera and having that type of evidence. What we really want to do is just be on the side of the truth. And I've said before that the biggest thing that we do on this channel is look at pieces of literature like articles or listen to podcasts or watch documentaries. And when somebody makes that one sentence and you're like, wait a second, is that really true? And then you just start reading up on something. You want to learn more about that. And I think that human beings have this enormous desire for the truth. When you think about this individual, uh, Slag Wormwood, James Robert Slag Wormwood that they have created based on perhaps a come Perhaps several stories have been pulled together in that one. And I mean, I think that this is actually a rather interesting way that the historians have gone back and learned these things about Jowers and found that the ghost has been moving from place to place. And I mean that metaphorically, that the story of this individual who passed away in this what sounds like a very gruesome and horrific death has been moving from different parts of Birmingham, Alabama, because the same way that people share stories and people share about ideas about what's going on and what happened. And, you know, you can play the game of telephone or Chinese whispers if people are still calling that. And certain things get changed. Certain things get added on. Certain things get subtracted even. And I definitely see that with the case of Richard Jowers. If what we have found from the historians is correct, as well as what's been printed in these articles, I often notice that some people are just going to be like, they're going to zone in on the skeptical version. And they're going to be like, OK, this is absolutely correct. This is what's going on. And they're just going to be dismissive of anything to the contrary. But it's like, 
now wait a second, why do you accept this person's response just because they're being critical or skeptical so easily when you completely discredit somebody else and neither one of them are citing too many sources and saying where they're getting it from? But as you heard, though, um, from re from just even going through these two articles from Last Gaps and as well as the one from Randolph, we can hear that um, there are numerous books that have been put out on the subject and people are trying to get these books from some primary source documents, but there is a little bit of imagination that goes on with all of them. I have to say, though, that if these events are true about Richard Jowers, as well as those two uh, gentlemen that passed away also in the late 1800s, it just, it just, it's somewhat saddening. I mean, it's very saddening, very saddening, but it's also very horrific. And, you know, your emotions are going to be going in a variety of different directions. But the big thing to say is that, um, I think that the ghost stories that people are trying to spread about Slag Wormwood would have been even more valuable if they actually were talking about Richard Jowers and, you know, this um, this uh, real human being who doesn't have these fictitious add ons and um, blowing the story up in a different way just to um, just to, quote unquote, make a better story. Well, what about the truth? And no matter what, though, I think that many human beings have a desire for the truth. Not all of us. Not all of us, oh no, but many of us have the um, desire to know what really happened. And that's where I would like to uh, leave it at for now. Once again, rest in peace to Richard Jowers and um, also to all of the uh, other workers of America, <laughs> workers of America Unite, I guess we should say, but not going down any of the um, crazier pathways. All right, well, that's all for me now. Once again, if you have any questions that you would like to include for our AMA and that we're going to do at the end of the month, just ask something tomorrow or ask something in the comment section. I mean, you can write tomorrow whenever you're listening to this, even if it's in the far, far future. Maybe we'll do something else. What is uh, what is something that you are curious about? What is something that you would just like um, to have discussed here on YouTube? And it can also be about ghost stories, paranormal activity. It's October. We're getting closer and closer to Halloween every day. And I'm just um, in a very good mood with that. Loving the uh, fall colors here, as well as all the pumpkins on the front porches. Good stuff. Okay, so I will see you guys on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.